In this video, we're going to be taking a look at debugging and troubleshooting Ansible playbooks. We're going to cover the two most common strategies for debugging Ansible playbooks, which are the debug module and register, which you can use to register the result of a task so you can inspect it later. We're also going to take a look at some common playbook issues that tend to crop up when you're developing an Ansible playbook. The two most common ones will be quoting errors and indentation errors. You'll see those all over the place, and I want to demonstrate some to you so that you're not scared when you do see them. There's nothing wrong with needing to debug something or getting a whole bunch of red text when you first run your little script. It's totally normal. It's part of the process of developing good playbooks. So let's have a look at the approach we're going to take. Okay, it's time to learn about debugging Ansible. This is going to be something you use all the time, so pay attention. We'll cover the basics here, and you'll have all the tools you need to become a virtuoso with your Ansible debugging. So the very first thing we need is the debug module, which is basically a very, very simple function that allows you to pass a message or a variable. And you can also pass some kind of verbosity, which we'll get into in just a moment. Essentially what happens here is you say debug, and you hand it a message. You can also use string interpolation, that is like Jinja templating, inserting a variable into a string with the double curly bracket syntax. So let's have a look at how a basic debug statement works, and then we'll look into some more complicated uses. I've got a debug control flow playbook here. You'll find that in simple playbook examples, debugging debug control flow. I suggest you create an inventory file here, I've created one that contains a single IP address of a running LXC container. So the two things we're going to run right now are a single debug statement with a message. We'll comment out the rest of this for the time being. Ansible playbook debug control flow. We're passing it the inventory, and we're going to ask it to log in as the user root. Very simple. We have our single debug message. You can see the task name is here, a simple debug statement, the host it ran on, and the message that we passed. This is not very exciting yet. So let's see a slightly more advanced use of this debug message. Get rid of that initial statement for now. So here's what we're doing. We're actually running a shell command. So we're opening up a shell on the remote host, running the uptime command, and registering that variable. You've seen the register module used before, and we'll actually be covering it in the next video, which is the control flow and conditionals video. But what this basically does is the register module basically says, whatever the task that just ran is, whatever the action here is, register that result in a variable. So it's creating a new variable in your namespace, which you can then use, for example, with debug. So if we pass the var to debug as the argument, this should show us the my uptime variable, which has been registered by this shell command action. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so this changed is from our shell command. I can actually give that a name in a moment. Uptime debugging. So this is our variable, my uptime. And we can see some facts about that. Has it changed? What was the command that was run to get this as a result? Some timing information. Standard in, standard in, standard out, and standard error. Any warnings we received, etc. So you can see this starts to be very useful because you can get quite a bit of detail about what happened. Let's uncomment this. I'm doing the exact same debug statement with one additional argument. The debug module takes one parameter, which is called the var or the message. They're mutually exclusive and it also takes something called verbosity. You can set this to one, two, three, or higher, and I'll show you what happens. I'm running the same command again that I did before, and you can see I don't get any debug output. Well, that's because the verbosity option requires that you are running Ansible Playbook with a dash V. So let's have a look at what we see when we do that. You can see all those verbosity one, verbosity two, and verbosity three tasks were skipped. There we go, that's better. You can see with a single dash V for verbose to the Ansible playbook binary, we are now running the task with a verbosity of one. Verbosity two and three have not run, they're still being skipped. Let's see what happens when we 
add another V. So very verbose, two Vs. Same idea again, and you can see the behavior of the Ansible playbook binary, the output it's giving us, is actually changing. It's becoming more verbose. So uptime verbosity 1 has run, uptime verbosity 2 has run, giving us the same output. The third one should still be skipped, and it is. However, you can see Ansible starting to give us more information than it was before. For example, task path, the path to the file that contains the task that just ran. So this is useful if you've got a lot of include files or something, if you need to figure out where something is being run that's not working, well, passing two Vs is one way to do that. Ansible will start telling you the path to the task, to each task that runs. You'll also get more detailed information. So instead of just changed, you'll see some meta information about that task. Okay, now we're gonna go totally wild and we're gonna pass three Vs. This is gonna be pretty verbose, so uh, hang on to your seats. This is just the login, blam. Okay, so you can see all three uptime debug statements now ran. We gave them a verbosity of one to three and all of them are running now. And we have some additional information that Ansible's just giving us for everything now, including a changed statement. You can see there's way more meta information here. There's also uh, nicer formatting. And you can see the actual raw commands that Ansible is doing on our target machine. So if you're really wondering what's going on, this will tell you step-by-step step what Ansible is actually doing. We're establishing an SSH connection for a user, root. We're using exec with SSH to execute a command. These are the options we're passing to SSH, the control master and control persist options, on and on and on. So you can get extremely detailed output from Ansible this way. Let's talk a little bit about register. Debug is often used along with the register module where you register the output of something. Let's look at some other fun things you can do with register. You can see I'm registering two more things here, a username as the result of the shell command who am I and a mattermost install variable, which is the result of statting a path home mattermost mattermost app, which does exist on our remote server. For each of these debug statements, I'm going to be either debugging a message with a string interpolation here, you can see the variable that I'm looking at, or the naked variable itself, which will be all the fields of a variable. You'll notice one of the things I can do here is access a subfield of a variable. A variable is actually sort of a dictionary, which has a bunch of meta information about the registered result of an action or task. So one of the things we can do is access subfields. This will make sense in just a moment. So we're gonna run this, check the output, and I'll explain it. You can see we're doing a stat, and then we're running that who am I command. Here we're debugging a variable, which is the username, which gives us this entire dictionary, right? So you can see this is kind of taken from the namespace. This is just one item in the play namespace, and it's giving us yet another dictionary inside. So something did change, here's the command that was run, start and end times, just like I mentioned before. That's nice to have, but usually you'll want to access some subfield there, so one specific thing. Likewise, the mattermost install, this is what the register metadata looks like from a stat module task. And as we scroll down, you can see here we're debugging the username standard out. So the standard out of this returned root. That was written to standard out. The standard error was empty. Nothing was written to standard error because who am I completed successfully. That shell command completed successfully. When we look at the stat of mattermost install, that's true because as you can see, the path that we're statting does exist on that target machine. So is dear is true, so that returns true. If we look back at the shell command here, who am I, standard out, and standard error was empty. You can see that there. So this is a way of accessing individual fields on registered variables that are data structures. Those will always be dictionaries. So that should give you a fair amount of tricks that you can use. It's really just three techniques. You're using debug, you're using register, and then you're able to control verbosity and access subfields of a variable. That should give you quite a bit of troubleshooting ability. Now that you know that, we can cover some very common playbook problems, just the most popular ones that you'll see all the time. 
A lot of your errors as you develop a playbook will come from incorrect YAML syntax. We're going to cover YAML syntax in slightly more detail in just a moment, sort of everything you need to know for Ansible development. But I want to call out the two most common mistakes that you'll find yourself making, certainly the ones that I find myself making and I see other people making. The first is when you don't quote an argument that starts with a variable or some data, I should say. So when this is at the beginning and you're using some variable or accessing some field here, this will throw an error. I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. What you need to do is quote the entire thing because of how YAML treats data structures, literals, and how Ansible does string interpolation. These things kind of collide a little bit and you just need to be sure to when you begin a value, a string value with double curly brackets, quote the entire thing so that YAML understands that this is a string and not the beginning of a dictionary definition or a dictionary literal. So you can see this is quoted right now. I'm going to unquote this and my syntax highlighting is already pointing this out as a problem to me, but we're going to ignore that and try to run this. Same playbook. And you can see syntax error while loading YAML. I know this red text is like kind of easy to ignore, but just make sure you read through it. It shows you the offending line. It's that vhost path definition here. And Ansible even gives you a friendly hint like, hey, you should probably be quoting this. This is so common that they're checking for this and giving you a very specific error message. So let's go ahead and fix that again and commit the next horrific mistake, which is incorrect indentation. YAML syntax is indentation sensitive just like Python. So if we mess up the indentation on something like say a shell, let's make this even harder to figure out. Just a single space here will throw off the YAML parser and you'll see it throw up immediately. Now, in this case, it's fairly easy to find, but you may have some slightly more strange errors that are tougher to track down. So be sure to pay attention to syntax highlighting and use syntax highlighting and turn on warnings. So you can see this is pointing out exactly where this indentation problem is. That's it for very basic Ansible troubleshooting and debugging. That should actually get you pretty far. Ansible is fairly intuitive. It's deterministic in the way it runs. And as you just saw, the verbosity flags that you can add to Ansible playbook when you run it in the command line actually make troubleshooting this, I'm not going to say a breeze, but less of a pain than a lot of other tools are.